Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Boss Up Conversation. I'm here with my good friend, Brianna Coleman, who is a licensed realtor in Maryland. She loves working with individuals and families, buyers, sellers, and renters to achieve their real estate goals. Now, I will have her contact information down below in the show more section. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Miss Brianna Coleman. Hello, everybody. My name is Brianna Coleman. I am a licensed real estate agent in Maryland. And I've known Gio for quite a few years now through YouTube. So it's a pleasure to be on her show today. Well, thank you so much just for agreeing to come and have a conversation about what you do. So let's get started. Brianna, how long have you been a realtor? So I am coming up on three years. I was licensed right before the pandemic in February. So like February 20 something, 2020. So I'm just coming up on three years. Great. Okay. Now I know a lot of people and myself want to know, how did you get into real estate as a realtor? So I wanted to do real estate for a long time. And then I had my daughter, then I had another daughter, then I had another daughter. <laughs> so um, uh, my dad is in real estate. I have an aunt that's in real estate. They used to sell at um, new construction homes. And I always just love going into the model homes and they just be so pretty. So I think that's kind of where I first got the bug when I was little. And then when I got older, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I took the class and I just I just went for it. So I've always loved real estate and looking at homes. And yeah, so that's that's how I got started. OK, so how can people know where to go to take the class in each state or city or have so, you? Um, so in Maryland, you have to go on the uh, the DLLR site and you have to make sure you're going to take a class that is um, certified. And from there, you can pick an online class or in-person class. So in your state, look at like real estate licensing. You may have to Google that or look it up in your state and then make sure you're taking a, a legit class. And then the class is 60 hours online for Maryland. Um, or you can do it in person, which will make it a little longer. But 60 hours, is it took me, uh, without going straight through, it took me like a month, a month and a half to, to finish. Oh, really? That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So all you have to do is just go online in your state and find out how to get your real estate license. Yep. Take wow. the take the uh, class test, and then you have to take the licensing test. So okay. it's a national, it's a national and a state portion. So for me, I I failed the state portion once, no, twice, and I passed the national the first time. So it's kind of separate, but you have to pass both to get your license. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So. Now that you got your license and stuff, how how did you start getting your clients and how many do you work with, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you work with like two or three a day or one a day? So I can work with about four or five active clients. So for buyers, it's a little hard to work with a lot of buyers because they all want to see homes. But uh, for listings, you can kind of rack up on the listings. And the way I get my, you know, mostly the way I've got my leads is either social media or my sphere of influence, SOI. My okay. family has been rocking it, getting my name out. I have a lot of family in the area. And yeah, they, if I do a customer appreciation, it will kind of be like my family, their referrals, and then social media uh, folks that I've met and helped out. So yeah. So your family is like word of mouth for you. So they- wow. They putting it out there. So that is how you get most of your clients. And I know a lot from social media because mm. uh, a lot of uh, realtors and brokers, they use uh, social media. Yeah. And mostly um, I get a few on like Instagram, nothing on TikTok, but YouTube is for me, like generates more leads than, than the rest. So, Oh, really? TikTok yeah. was? No, you know what? I just kind of fool around with TikTok. I'm not really serious on there. I just post anything. You know, I feel like I want to have at least one platform where it's not just real estate, real estate, real estate. Right. Um, but, what, what, but what, but uh, what, 
uh, social media site gets the most clients for you? Yeah, YouTube. Oh, YouTube does. Mm -hmm. Wow. Y'all hear that yeah. out there? YouTube does a really good job at targeting, you know, the, your local audience that you want to target and um, other places, too, when I look at the analytics. But, yeah, they do, they do a really good job. Wow, that's cool. You know, I always kind of been interested in uh, real estate, and you know me. I, if it's money, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> right? What? <laughs> All right. Now, so. you know, for you, Gio, you have a nice community, and and yeah, that would be good because at the at the very least, you can also get referrals. So, say you're in. I know you're in Texas, right? Right. So you're in Texas and somebody from Maryland wants to move to Texas, or one of my clients, and I say, oh yeah, I know Gio, and you can get referred that way or vice versa. If you have somebody moving to Maryland, you would say, hey, Bree, I know somebody, refer me, and you get paid like that. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's move on to the next question. Okay. Do you work alone or as part of a team? I work alone. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something that I want to know that I want to, uh, uh, because if I decide to do this, mm -hmm. I want to know this. How do you communicate with your clients and how often? Like, do you use social media? Do you call them on the phone? Do you go and meet them in person? Just how do you communicate with them? So initially, everything is pretty much virtual for me, um, like a buyer's consultation. And and it just depends on how you kind of run, want to run your business. But if somebody calls me uh, right away, I kind of say, OK, let's set up a Zoom to see where you are. For um, seller and buyer consultations, it depends on what they're comfortable with. Normally, I just hop on Zoom. That way, we can kind of meet each other face to face before we actually meet each other. Um, okay. Never by social media. Um, by the time we're on Zoom, I've got all the information to follow up and, and all that. Okay. So, w once you have, okay, say for instance, it's a seller, mm -hmm. and once you have them on Zoom, do they take you around their house to let you see what's up? No, so that's just um, me taking them. So say they haven't like decided to choose me as their realtor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'll ask them to come on the Zoom and tell them everything I offer and what the process will be like and all that. Um, and that just also depends on the time. It could be a call where, you know, I looked up the house and say to somebody that's like, look, I need to sell my house. I need to get it. That I'm in the car at the house. <laughs> so right, right. it just depends. If it's somebody who's like, oh, I'm thinking about it, you know, then I'll get on Zoom and let them know what I'm offering if they haven't decided on a realtor yet and they're kind of doing interviews. Or I'll do also that in person. So it just kind of depends on where they are and what they're looking for. So Okay, so you cannot actually really uh, sell a house on Zoom? No, but you can sell a house virtually. You can yeah, sell a house virtually. I, I, I didn't mean, yeah, I didn't mean Zoom. I meant yeah. online. Yeah, you can, but it's not as common any anymore as it was like kind of during the pandemic. So people were right. doing it house unseen and just by video, just by virtual tour, but not as much anymore. Not as much anymore. Unless you're you know, away. So say somebody who can't make it to Texas and they're moving to Texas, they would say, hey, Gio, you know, I trust you. Find us a house. <laughs> so you could, but yeah, it's not too common unless you're okay. out. Okay. Okay. So do what do you specialize in? Do you specialize in buying a home, renting a home, selling a home? Which one? Uh, all three. <laughs> okay. I work with buyers, uh, not so much renters right now because I can't, I actually can't take a whole lot of renters on right now because there's nothing on the market for them. Okay. Um, and then when it is, it's very strict. So I don't take a whole lot of renters now, but yeah, buying, selling, renting, I do all of it. Okay. So what's, tell us something about buying when you get ready to work with a buyer, what happens? So you mean my process of yeah, kind of. So I pretty much do like an onboarding type of situation, almost like you're, you know, applying for something. <laughs> but I do an onboarding uh, uh, consultation and um, I email them this long email about the whole buying process. Most yeah. people read it. Some people don't. But it's a whole long thing that you can kind of use as a guide, at least as we're walking, you know, kind of through the process. Um, I set up the expectations. I let them know what's going on in the market. Um, so they know, you know, to kind of expect if we're going to be in a multiple offer situation, um, and then, um, they get with the lender to get pre-approved and then okay. on the shopping. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Okay. So you work with brokers? Yeah. So um, I'm, you have to kind of work with the broker. So my broker is Century, One, Century 21 New Millennium. And mm -hmm. um, in order to really be licensed, you have to work with a, a broker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you get ready to like sell someone's house, is there a particular uh, order that you have to go through? Do you meet with the client to come up with how much you're going to sell it for? Yeah. Yep. So I'll give them a general CMA in the beginning um, without seeing their house, depending on like time wise. If it's a thing where I'm there, then I don't, I don't do that in advance. But um, I also give them a seller guide that gives them uh, from the start to finish what to expect. Um, then once I show up to the house, we finalize the price, sign all the documents um, virtually, you know, like DocuSign. Yeah. And then, um, I have someone come out, take pictures, put the sign in the yard and it's on the market. And then I update them to let them know what kind of traction it's getting and how many the feedback that they get and, and all that as, as it's on the market. All right. So you don't do any open houses or anything like that? Yep. Open houses are um, normally anytime between Thursday and Sunday. Um, sometimes the house will go really fast and the open market is almost, I mean, open market, the open house is almost just for a show almost because stuff yeah. is so fast. Um, so, we didn't have as many during the pandemic because stuff was going in like two, three, four days. So yeah, yeah they're, they're coming back now. Yep. Okay, so do you prefer having an open house? Yeah, I like having an open house um, as a realtor. Sorry, I had a uh, notification. But um, I prefer having open houses as a realtor because it kind of gives um, the seller um, a kind of a good feeling that you're trying and you're marketing and you're doing everything you can to get their house sold. Um, it shows the neighbors that, hey, this house in my neighborhood is for sale. They may know somebody who wants to live there and not really actively looking. Um, so it's a lot of it's a big, huge marketing opportunity for a realtor and for the seller for the property to get noticed. All right. So how do you prepare for an open house? So for open houses, normally uh, before you can only have kind of packaged goodies. So I'm still kind of doing some packaged like goodies for people to take and waters and things and cute little marketing things um, for myself and for people to take. Um, I'll have information about the house. I'll have, you know, exactly how much it'll cost you, depending on if you're getting an FHA, USDA, VA loan, if, you know, if it's eligible. So that way, if it's somebody who's coming in that's unrepresented, they can come in and actually see, OK, this house is going to cost me this much. You know, they don't have to guess at what their mortgage, you know, could possibly be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I kind, kind of I don't show them around the house because you kind of want to stay near the door. You don't want to be upstairs when somebody's coming in. So. Yeah, just kind of let them answer any questions and yeah. So so you let them walk around the house by themselves because you have to okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. do you do I mean, you for, for safety too? You don't want to be walking upstairs or being in the basement while somebody's coming to the door, you have no idea, you know. Right. <laughs> right. Unless you're locking the door by every end, it's not really, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you stage? Yeah, so depending on the property, um, if it's vacant. Um, I'll offer staging. Um, if it's not vacant, I just kind of help them stage their own stuff, stage what they have and tell them what they need to take out. Or maybe something I can add. Sometimes I'll even take something from my house and <laughs> add it into the air. Wow. Just so, to make it, yeah. Can you explain what staging means? So staging is just basically taking a vacant or um, property that has furnishing, removing that furnishing and replacing it with... Um, just making your home almost look like a model home, making it very neutral, making it so that, you know, it's not too loud, not too bright. And it's just kind of neutral. You're just kind of walking around and you can see yourself in it instead of the person who lives there. Well, let me ask you this. Who comes up with how much to sell the house for? So it's just based on comps. So say your neighbor's house sold for 400000 the one next door sold for five hundred, but their house is bigger. You wouldn't use a five hundred. If you and your neighbor's house are exactly the same, more than likely your house will be listed at 400. If the market has changed uh, since it's been listed, it could be a little lower, it could be a little higher. If you don't have granite countertops, that could be a little lower. If your basement is unfinished, it be, could be ten to fifteen thousand dollars lower. So it just just kind of depends. Yeah. Okay, so is that the meaning of comps when they say comps in this area? It's about how much your neighbor house sold for. Yep. It could be your neighbor. It could be your neighborhood. It can be the city. It could be the zip code. And it kind of depends on like, say 
you're in uh, Dallas. Okay. Um, I'm not really familiar with areas around Dallas, but Dallas is kind of, I would assume that the homes in Dallas are a little higher than the homes right outside of Dallas. And it can right. be really, really close to each other, but it just all depends. It go from a $400,000 house in Dallas to three fifty, dollars you know, right on the outskirts. Right. So, right. so uh, does the street matter? Like what street you live on? Is that part of the comp or is it the neighborhood that raises the comp? Yeah, it could be the neighborhood. It could be the school system. It could be, you know, so like even in one county, it could be a more sought after school system that kind of raises the comps. It could be, you know, land. So it could be a lot of different factors of, you know, what can make something higher than other. Normally it's not streets, but it could be like neighborhood or zip code or, you know, county, of course. Yeah. Okay, and that determines how much you can sell your house for. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a factor, yep. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Have you ever ran across where you thought the price should be this, but the seller thinks the price should be higher? How do you handle uh -huh. with that when you know that the house may not sell for what they want and they should sell it for what that's reasonable? So really, I have not had that. I haven't had that issue where it's been on the market and I wasn't happy with the price. So that's kind of happened on the back end, but it's kind of like, this is what we're going to list it for. I'm letting you know with the comp support. And if you're comfortable with knowing what you think it should be for, we'll put it on for that. And if it doesn't sell, just be prepared or ready that we could, we'll have, may have to lower the price or that it's going to sit on the market a lot longer than some of the other comparable properties. So say, the other homes are listed at 400000 and they sat on the market for 10 days. If you want to now put yours at 430 put it on at 430 Let's see what happens. But it may take 30 days. It may take 60 days for somebody to, to pick up on it. And then by the time you pay the mortgage, another mortgage payment, and um, you know, possibly if they're staging in there. So it's just, yeah, <laughs> it just, just kind of depends on them. Just be prepared, but you kind of let them know already. That it's either going to take longer, so oh, it's it, may, okay. it may take longer, or you may have to end up getting some seller help because the longer your house is on the market, the more people are going to think they can get a deal. So it, it, it just right. kind of makes sense. Well, so do you depend on uh, open houses more than uh, social media to sell a house? Um, no, just kind of both because you never know when where the lead is going to come from or where the buyer is going to come from. And you only need one. <laughs> you just need one person to have interest to make a good, strong offer. And yeah, so it just depends. Um, oftentimes, I think from open houses, they don't sell the home as much as people might think they do. But mm -hmm. it's really good for exposure. So um, I'll even pay for marketing, targeted marketing and Instagram and social media and Facebook towards a certain zip code or towards the house. Like say the house that I'm selling is... 3,000 square feet. I'll pick um, a similar area with maybe houses that are a little bit smaller. So those are the, going to be the people who are going to purchase in, in that neighborhood. Oh, that's pretty sharp. That's smart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it's, a, it's a lot of different ways. So it's it's a lot more than people think is just sticking a sign in the yard. Now, those yard signs do work getting traction, but it's a lot of marketing and, you know, especially after the pandemic, it's, sl it's slower now. The, the, uh, days on market a little bit longer so okay so uh the last question i have for you is how long does it normally take you to close a deal so once you've submitted your offer and it's accepted it'll take it's 30 to 45 days so 30 days is kind of average but sometimes it's it's not uncommon to where you can get um, an extension and it ends up being around 30 40 days 45 days Okay, so do people normally pay cash? Um, people do pay cash, um, even up to I've had seven hundred thousand dollars people paying in cash. Oh, yeah. So um, people do pay in cash, but normally it's it's financing. Even if it's a big down payment, normally they still finance uh, the course of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, this has been a great conversation, um, Brianna. And you guys have heard it from the best realtor I know, Ms. Bridget <laughs> Coleman. 
And now her social media and links will be down below. Now, Brianna, I want to thank you for taking out the time to just come and be on the Boss Life Online show, Boss Up Conversation. I really appreciate it. Now, are there any last words or inspiring tips you want to leave with the audience who are thinking about becoming a realtor? Uh, well, first, thank you for having me and having me on. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I'll be open to come back anytime I'm invited. Um, but uh, for anyone who's thinking about becoming a realtor, um, if you're not ready, ready to take the classes, um, I kind of tell everybody to just act as a realtor. So go to some open houses, see what they do, see if you have the time for it. Um, go see, really, if you're not licensed, you that's really all you can do as far as showings. But you can just kind of practice. Go drive to some houses. Go um, study and, and study the books and just kind of put yourself in that mode that you, you know, are a realtor. Um, and yeah, uh, and watch some of my videos. That'll kind of give you some uh, <laughs> behind the scenes of, of what it's like. Um, and feel free to ask me questions. I get people to ask me questions on YouTube all the time. That's my daughter trying to peek in. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that. That's about it. <laughs> All right, and plus, guys, she has the cutest get out of here three three <laughs> girls you ever want to see. I'm telling you, those <laughs> girls are beautiful. But anyway, Brianna, thank you once again. Thank you so much for viewing and coming to the premiere, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you as well, and I will see you guys on the next. Boss Up Conversation. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>